A police standoff after a mass shooting in California. This was the moment when armed officers smashed their way into a van they believe is linked to an attack that took place during Chinese New Year celebrations. Ten people were killed and many more injured in the shooting at a dance studio. Our priority beyond taking care of the victims and survivors of this horrible incident that th we get this man off the street. Also ahead, Labour calls for a probe into claims the BBC chairman helped the former Prime Minister Boris Johnson secure a loan. Fans, film stars and friends of Lisa Marie Presley say goodbye at a Graceland memorial service. And... A thriller at the Emirates as Arsenal edge past Manchester United in the Premier League. This is ITV News with Gamal Fambale. Good evening. Police in California are searching a van believed to be connected to a deadly mass shooting that took place during celebrations for the Chinese New Year. It is a developing situation and it's still unclear whether the suspect has been found inside the vehicle. The tragedy unfolded late last night at an event in Monterey Park near Los Angeles where tens of thousands of people had gathered to welcome the Lunar New Year. Ten people were killed and ten more were injured when the gunman fired on a dance studio. Chloe Keeley has the latest. These were the tense final moments of a two-hour standoff between police and a white van they believed their suspect could be inside. Their hunt for a man who murdered ten people brought them to this car park in southwest Los Angeles. A painstakingly slow and delicate operation until the moment they finally smashed through the glass. It still isn't clear what they found inside, but this is the man they were looking for. We haven't named him, and there's a reason for that. We have a lot of resources uh, in the sheriff's department, working with other agencies uh, to make sure, again, that our priority beyond taking care of the victims and survivors of this horrible incident, that th we get this man off the streets. It was just after 10 o'clock last night when police were called to a ballroom dance club in California's Monterey Park. An hour earlier, these streets had been the scene of celebrations for Lunar New Year. But police described arriving to find people pouring out onto the streets, screaming. The shooter had killed 10 people and at least 10 more were taken to hospital, where some are tonight in a critical condition. Earlier on, tens of thousands had been gathered at an event to celebrate Lunar New Year. Monterey Park is a predominantly Asian-American city a few miles east of Los Angeles. Police say they don't yet know what the suspect's motive was. Horrible that such a thing could occur at a time of celebration for so many in the AAPI community and in the Asian community worldwide. It's America's deadliest shooting since May last year, when 21 people were killed in a school in Uvalde, Texas. Last night's massacre in Monterey Park is the fifth mass killing in the United States just this month. Police believe it's connected to another incident in another ballroom nearby. They say a male Asian suspect walked in with a firearm before having it wrestled off him by people inside. Police say they still don't know the motive for this crime. And so America is once again asking why. Chloe Keedy, ITV News. The Cabinet Office has defended the appointment process for the chairman of the BBC, following reports that he got the job shortly after helping then-Prime Minister Boris Johnson secure a guarantee on a loan worth £800,000. Labour is calling for a parliamentary investigation into the claims that Richard Sharp helped Mr Johnson when he was in financial difficulty in late 2020. It is the latest headache for the Conservatives. Their party chairman, Nadim Zahawi, is still under pressure to clear up questions over his tax affairs. Our political correspondent, Carl Dinan, reports. I'm too honoured. He's no longer Prime Minister, of course, but Boris Johnson still gets a warm welcome in Kyiv 
and still attracts scrutiny of his personal affairs at home. Today, the Sunday Times reporting that a large loan was organised for him with the help of Richard Sharp, the man he was about to appoint as chair of the BBC. There have been many people in the past who have had senior roles at the BBC who have um, you know, political affiliations and have been politically active. That's neither um, unusual or inappropriate. But none of them were sorting out a loan for the Prime Minister during the appointment process. The fact that Richard is an incredibly experienced and effective leader uh, of a large uh, organisation is what qualified him to be uh, put forward as uh, chairman of the BBC. Mr Sharp had introduced businessman Sam Blythe, who was offering to guarantee the Prime Minister's loan, to the head of the civil service. But he told the Sunday Times, there is not a conflict when I simply connected, at his request, Mr Blythe with the Cabinet Secretary and had no further involvement whatsoever. Labour has referred Boris Johnson to the Parliamentary Standards Commissioner because none of this was declared in his register of members' interests. And we think it is of material interest that he was backing someone to be the chairman of the BBC at the same time as that person was playing some sort of brokerage role to sort out his personal finances. Mr Johnson later hosted Mr Sharp and the businessman Sam Blythe to dinner at Chequers, but apparently his finances were not discussed. Of the dinner, his spokesman said, so what, big deal, adding, all Mr Johnson's financial arrangements have been properly declared and registered. And Carl is with us now. Carl, it's not just questions about Boris Johnson's conduct. Party chairman Nadeem Zahawi's tax affairs are also making headlines. How do you think this is going to play out uh, this week? Yes, and the affair surrounding Nadeem Zahawi is much more serious because he's a serving cabinet minister and there's still a great deal that we don't know about his undoubtedly complex tax affairs. We don't know, for example, whether he was in dispute with HMRC when he was in charge of HMRC. We don't know if, as reported, he had to pay a million pound penalty over the carelessness of his tax declaration. And I think what happens next will depend on whether or not the Prime Minister feels that that position is defensible by the time he has to stand up in the House of Commons on uh, Wednesday at 12 o'clock. And I think if he doesn't feel that he can defend that, then something will have to give by then. Yeah, tricky week for the Prime Minister. Carl, thank you. Uh, some other news now, and the German foreign minister has said that Germany would not stand in the way if Poland sends leopard tanks to Ukraine. Germany has been widely criticised over its reluctance to supply the tanks to bolster Ukraine's resistance in their war with Russia. Annalena Baerbock was asked to clarify their position in an interview on French TV. And more classified documents have been found at the home of US President Joe Biden. The FBI conducted a 13-hour search of his Delaware home and took six documents. Previously, files have been found in the garage and storage space of another home and also in the offices of a think tank. President Biden says he's cooperating with the investigation. Family, friends and fans gathered in Memphis today for a memorial service for Lisa Marie Presley. The only daughter of Elvis, who died earlier this month, aged 54, was remembered at Me as Memphis's precious jewel. Held at Graceland, the service featured tributes from Axel Rose and the Duchess of York, Sarah Ferguson. Ellie Pitts reports. The songs of her father greeted mourners who'd gathered since the early hours at the home, now final resting place, of Lisa Marie Presley. Family, friends and fans attended the memorial service today for the singer who died 10 days ago. Her mother, Priscilla Presley, read the words of her granddaughter. Lisa Marie Presley was an icon, a role model, a superhero to many people all over the world. But Mama was my icon, my role model, my superhero. Our heart is broken, Lisa. We all love you. Thank you. Lisa Marie was born in 1968, the only child of the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. I love you. He died when she was just nine years old. But through her own singing career, she kept the memory of his music alive. And just days before she died, Lisa Marie's last public appearance was at the Golden Globes, where the actor who played her late father in the recent film about his life 
picked up the Best Actor Award. Lisa Marie, Priscilla, I love you forever. Guns N' Roses singer Axl Rose was amongst the musicians who performed and paid tribute today. I feel like I'm supposed to be texting her like right now, saying I'm here, telling her how, how wonderful everyone is. And close friend Sarah Ferguson, who called Lisa Marie Sissy, passed on the wisdom of the late Queen. My late uh, mother-in-law used to say, grief is the price we pay for love. And how right she was. Lisa Marie joins her son, who took his own life in 2020, and Elvis at the Memphis mansion Graceland, where they'll forever lay side by side. Ellie Pitt, ITV News. We've been given a snapshot of how the country will celebrate the King's coronation in May. The ceremony in Westminster Abbey on Saturday the 6th will be followed by a star-studded concert at Windsor Castle the next day with an amateur choir including NHS workers and refugees. There will also be street parties and on the extra bank holiday Monday an event called the Big Help Out encouraging us all to volunteer for a local cause. Uh, finally tonight, the Premier League, where Arsenal's hopes of a first title for 19 years took another leap forward today. A thrilling 3-2 victory over Manchester United leaves the Gunners five points clear at the top. Here's Chris Gunner. You could tell this was important. Football royalty in the crowd. Sir Alex Ferguson, David Beckham and Lofty from EastEnders. And right on cue from a fixture that's had its fair share of drama over the years, Rashford struck for United. Oh, my God. But it didn't last. Eddie Nketiah seizing his chance as stand-in for injured leading man Gabriel Jesus and making his mark on the biggest stage. It was two and fro, and one of England's young stars, Bakayo Saka, made it 2-1 to Arsenal. Saka tries one. Oh! Then it was United's turn to fight back with Lissandro Martinez levelling the scores. Oh, this was just like the old classics. Wherefore art thou, Beckham and son? But this would not be United's romantic ending. That belonged to Eddie and Ketia in the dying seconds of a dramatic finish. Not just one goal, but two, and it won the match. What a story. Arsenal are halfway to writing another glorious chapter in their history. Chris Scudder, ITV News. And that is it from all of us here. A very good night.